Picking up the car. Well, here I am. I'm in Plano uh, at your auto. These guys did a great job, so far as I could tell, picking up the car. And um, haven't drove it yet. I'm going to find out how it's running. They replaced a uh, module, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. So let's, uh, let's get the car opened up. Nice. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. It is so loud. God. The machines out here. This is what I like about the car. You get inside. See how much quieter it is in here? All right, let's see what happens. Let's see what lights up on the dash. And let's have a look. All right. <laughs> no lights. Just the standard. That's what's supposed to be there. Nice. All right, I'm gonna show you the module. I haven't looked under the hood yet, so let's have a look. All right, here we go. This thing is quiet. That damn uh, truck over there is making way more noise than the car is. So this module here is, I guess, what they replaced, that control module. And basically, this thing here, uh, this is a pump, a distribution block, and a computer module. And this is what I fried out when I was doing the donuts and the burnouts. And without this thing controlling a whole bunch of your hydraulic stuff and whatnot, you won't have any electronically powered steering. So you have hydraulic power steering, but the power steering is electrically assisted. You also have an auto leveling and whatnot. Let me get back in the car. If it wasn't for the uh, excavator over there, it'd be dead quiet. You wouldn't hear anything. Let's see if this is working now. I should be able to press this button, lift, and the car will rise. Let's see if you can tell whether or not it's rising or not. Let me turn it off and see what happens. Turn it off and see if it dips down. Hmm. It's very slight. Turn it back on again. Usually you could see like the Spirit of Ecstasy. Yeah, there we go. So it lifts up just a tiny bit. Then you have uh, and you have another feature here called the park distance control. This thing is, is kind of dim because we're in the dark here. Uh, park distance control. When I pull that up, this will show you how close you are to an object. And it is working uh, because we're, you know, about three feet, a couple of two or three feet from this wall. It's letting me know that that's there, and uh, I, can, I can turn that off. All right, so ah, it looks like it's it's working great. All right, next thing is to drive it. Uh, I've mentioned these before. This is a seat belt extender. I put these in a lot of my cars, and I put it in this one because uh, rather than having to reach down and scratch up that little area there. You can put this right in and it sticks way up by my hip and it just makes it a little easier. All right, let's uh, drive the car, put it in gear. And ah, yes, my power steering is powering just fine. Yes, you can, look at that. Do, 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 you can drive with you can drive with your pinky. You can literally drive with your pinky. <laughs> it's so soft. Now, once you reach about 15 miles an hour, I think it is, the, it's driving kind of firm right now. Uh, the lift will automatically drop. So I'm gonna turn the lift off. The lift is for pulling into driveways and, you know, a little higher altitude driveways. I just realized I should have took a left, whatever. Ah, yeah, it's, 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 everything's working. 
Now, this park light is still on. The reason is, is because I didn't fix it. There is an electronic parking module, a, a parking e-brake, and it was gonna be a thousand bucks to replace it and fix it. And I said, you know what, just forget it for right now. I'll fix it later. I don't really need it. I never use it. It's a plastic gear, you know? And uh, I was like, Pff, I don't need it. It's, you know, <laughs> I, I live in Texas. It's completely flat here. So anyway, I'm glad to have my power steering back. Look how quiet it is in here. It's beautiful. Now this thing, um, a lot of traffic. I know it's a big boat, but it's not slow. So one of the issues that was the that that module also controls your ABS and your traction control. So without that module, you don't have your electronic power steering, you don't have your assisted uh, your auto ride height, and you don't have um, your traction control or ABS. So if you were to floor it, you would peel out. You know, you would fishtail in this thing. It's a V12. It'll go. It's got you know power. Right here at this intersection is where I did my little rant the other day about how I turned right on red into my lane and the other guy had turned left on his green and into my lane. And he was telling me that I did the wrong, I turned into the lane closest to you folks. All right, well, it seems to be doing great. It's driving perfect, nothing wrong with it. All right guys, well, there's a little bit of an update. Uh, it cost me $1,700 to for the part and the labor for this thing. But, um, hey, you know what? I got my car back and I'm driving it and I'm enjoying it and it's fantastic. And that's really, really what matters. Um, the car's driving beautifully, everything is working fine. It still has those couple of oil leaks. And I've just decided I'm gonna live with them because I did some math and based on the repair cost of, rep of fixing the oil leaks, I would have to, uh, I would have to buy a quart of oil every week for like 10 years to equal the amount of money that I would have spent on the oil. So it's just not good math, you know? Uh, and, and I, I see these comments all the time, people saying, well, if you can't afford the car, you shouldn't have the car. Rolls Royce drivers, you're supposed to ride in the back. They don't ask about how much it costs. Listen, am I a millionaire? I, I probably got a million dollars worth of stuff, but I wouldn't call myself a millionaire. Uh, can I walk in and buy one of these new? No, no, I cannot. I don't have that kind of bread. This thing costs... $630,000 for a brand new one if you go to Rolls Royce and pick one up, right? This thing's 15 years old. It's got almost, it's got 78,000 miles on it as of right now. But I'm enjoying a Rolls Royce. And the average person doesn't know what year this car is, 2004, 2014, blah, whatever. It, the car still looks kind of the same. Is it the same car as a brand new one? No, it's got better technology and better performance and all those things. But, uh, meh, you know, I, I could have this car and buy a huge house in Dallas for the same cost of that other car. Mama didn't raise no fool, you know what I mean? I'd rather have like 20 cool cars than like one, you know, because I clearly, I have way, uh, I have a, probably a million dollars worth of cars, but I have a whole bunch of cars. I have a fleet of vehicles. I have a tour bus. I have, uh, you know, I'm not bragging, okay? I'm not trying to brag. I'm not flexing. But my point is that, you know, if you're the kind of person who makes millions and millions of dollars and you can afford to walk into a Rolls Royce dealership and have a bespoke car built for you, it's great. I'm happy for you. That's awesome. And if I could have had that kind of bread, I would do that. This was just a personal endeavor. You know, I'm just a poor kid who grew up in, the, you know, the north side of Fort Worth. Uh, 
nobody thought I'd ever amount to anything. Most of the people in my high school probably never made more than thirty or forty thousand dollars a year. You know what I mean? I didn't come from much. I'm a self-taught mechanic and fabricator. I don't have any formal training. I'm just a guy who learned how to work with his hands and learn how to do something. And and ever since I saw this car 15 years ago, I dreamed that one day, one day I would own one. And I would I would see it and I would I remember being in Las Vegas in a parking garage staring at one. And we've all done that. We've all been there at that point where you go, one day, man. Someday. And that day came and I made it a reality. I mean, it's kind of a hoopty. But you know what? It's mine. I paid cash for it. I own it. Titles in my drawer at my house. And when I got in this car, a tear rolled down my eye because, well, I accomplished something that I thought never, ever would happen. So if there's any lesson I have for any of you out there watching, you younger people or, or even older people, you know, I, I see these guys like Gary V and all these people talking about you know, follow your dreams, uh, work hard, save your money, invest wisely. This car was not a wise investment. <laughs> actually, I'm going to take that back. It actually is a, I, I could, I could currently sell this car for more than I paid for it. And that's an amazing thing. But listen, how long are you going to live? I'm 45. I'm not going to live past 65. So I've only got about 15 to 20 years of my life left. And I want to enjoy things. And um, I didn't want to deny myself this thing. And if I die tomorrow, which could happen to anybody, I got to live some of my dreams. What's that worth? And I see so many people coming, oh, you could have bought a brand new Mercedes. You could I don't want one of those, you know? This is what I wanted. And the only way I was gonna get one is to get an old one. And I had to wait 15 years for it to depreciate down to this. So uh, the reason I'm doing these videos and the reason I'm uh, sharing uh, the costs of things and how to do it is because this may be your dream also. And if you ever get the opportunity to buy one of these, you're gonna have to fix these things and this is stuff that you're gonna be aware of. So just keep in mind, if you ever buy a 10, 15 year old Rolls Royce, have a kitty on the side, you know, a little a little bank of 10 to 20 grand that you may or may not may have to put into the car. Just understand that. Same thing with a tour bus. Tour bus, you gotta constantly throw money into, or an RV, I should say. RV, you're gonna constantly put money into it. Same thing with a boat. That's why they're recreational vehicles. So, uh, but this is my daily driver. It's it's a, actually a pretty reliable car. It's a great car. And if I hadn't done that bonehead video of me doing burnouts and, and donuts in the car, I wouldn't have blown that module and I wouldn't be paying this right now. That was my fault. It was stupid. <laughs> I blame Hoovy, uh, Tyler Hoover forced me to buy this car and then forced me to do donuts with his influence because he is an influencer. And I don't have my own car wizard like he does, Hoovy. No, I love Tyler. Tyler did inspire me to buy this car. And he inspired me because after his video of the Rolls Royce and how reliable he found it to be and how what a joy it is, and he states how it's one of his favorite cars, I said, you know what, I'm gonna take the plunge. I'm gonna do it. So thank you, Tyler. He's the sweetest guy in the world. I love Tyler. I love him and Tavarish and uh, our boy, the car wizard. I talk to car wizard every day. Uh, he's getting to be one of my like best friends. And also uh, Rob Ferretti and, um, and, and Rob Pitts. If you haven't checked out Rob Pitts new YouTube channel, Rabbits Used Cars, go check him out. I did one of his radio shows recently, and that was so much fun. So anyway, I've talked your ear off for too long. I'll catch you guys later. I'm going to enjoy my car. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs>